Hello, hello. Happy Saturday. We are back. Feels good. How's everyone? Hey, Teresa, Pamela, Robin. Woo! Chat is flying this morning. Yeah, How is everyone? It, it's an exciting day. Well, first, it's been a while, right? I mean, my gosh, I hope you guys have, have enjoyed September, although September is really flying by. Hey, everyone. Hey, Diane, Monica. Hey, Kathy. Hello in Florida. I'm excited as well. I, I'm super excited. Mario's as usual, just buzzing around, just kind of doing his, <laughs> doing his technology thing. Hey, Terry. Hey, Betty. Hey, Francine, Sherry. Yeah, I think, you know, what I love about live is just a great way to, to connect. We did a couple of Instagram lives, though, for those that saw that. We had a good time yesterday. We always talk snacks and things, so uh, it's always fun. Hey, Tiffany. Snack snack? I said <laughs> snacks because, you know, snack talk is good. But smack talk, I don't know. There's enough of that going on. Hey, Julie. Hey, Robin. Hey, Jamie. We are back for Saturdays. It's, it's really strange because like when we finished up in August, it was like, okay, now what are we going to do? I think we were incredibly busy in September, but we are back and we're kicking it off in, in a great way, the way I, I see it. Hey, Christine. Hey, Rangers in the house as well. Yeah, it's, it's fun, huh? <laughs> it, it is good. We, We've been running around this morning. But because you got to find your groove. You don't do it for a while and then you kind of have to find your groove and you just kind of get in it. But we are, we have found, we have found our groove. Hey, You're Susie. Every night, what's that? You are in it. Hey, Susan. We, we are in it. That, that's what it is. So, so many um, people. Thank you all for Everybody. joining live. I mean, besides that we're kicking off uh, Saturdays, what better way to kick it off than celebrating the month of September? And I hope you guys have been celebrating all month long because today today is is my release day right and i think that that's really uh, exciting to i think bring something unique to this now if you're not familiar with stamp timber stamp timber has been a month-long celebration with simon says stamp.com and they have collaborated with all types of different uh, stamp companies to bring exclusive collabs and i couldn't be happier because the the collab we're doing of course is with stampers anonymous hey rocks hey jana how are you Hello, Milagros. So good to see you guys. So I think my Visa card is ready to celebrate too. Hey, that's kind of how I've been. I think I've, I, I feel like every day is a creative celebration around here. So with that, just to kind of give you a little overview, we're going to uh, go through and just talk about really what this Stamp Timber collab is. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. I know that, that Mario is in the chat, but I think if we're ready to go, I am ready to kick off. Are you ready? So let's all celebrate. Happy Stamp Timber. This guy. <laughs> Happy Stamp Timber. <laughs> He's doing whatever. Yeah. Happy Stamp Timber. Oh, Happy Stamp Timber. Stamp Timber. Heidi is in the house. Heidi. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Whoa. He's crazy. Uh, Heidi from Happy Simon Says Stamp Timber. is. <laughs> You see her, she just got right out of the way. Uh, from Simon Says Stamp is in the house. We are celebrating Stamp Timber, and I think it is, yeah, there you go. He, there you go, a little, little flash burn on the back of the ear. Uh, we are celebrating Stamp Timber uh, today, and Heidi oh flew gosh. in last night. Last night to celebrate with us today. Well, it's a, it's a party. I wanted to come to the party. Thank you to both Tim and Mario for allowing me to be part of so this. So good. So, so live good. Live today to see you all, to be here together. I seriously had no idea what you guys were going to do. Did you both know that the confetti was going to go off? I did, yeah. I didn't know it was going to go off that close. I didn't know it was going to go off that close, but I did know it was going to go off. Hey, Tifa. Uh, hey, Beth. Hey, Heather. Okay. Yes. So, Stamp Timber, like it, when Heidi said, I'd love to come out there and celebrate, I'm like, Please do so, and I know you're super busy. So thanks for thanks for well, celebrating you're busy with us too, today. And this is a party that I wouldn't want to miss. I mean, to get to see all of you people here who are watching us live, even even today, that showed up to to, uh, to see Tim set up to be able to engage yeah. with everybody and to share this big surprise that Tim and I have been working on for whoop, whoop. many months. We start thinking about next September when the the current September comes. We do. To have something special for yeah. you. It's, it's a yeah. party. I love surprises. I mean, I love surprises a lot, but Look. I love surprises. So we want to give you guys a nice, happy surprise today, too. Yeah. And where there's balloons, there's Heidi. Yeah. It's a party. I do love yeah. balloons. So she does love balloons. I was so late so, to the party so, bringing my balloons in. That's all right. Because I was like, like, Mario, you're going to come in for September. And I'm like, 
kind of stretching it. I'm like, I don't know what he's thinking because I got to kick this off and he's just walking around. I was having That's trouble right. over on. Well, it's very yeah, cool yeah. Over all right. All right. <laughs> good thing you're not in front of the camera all the yeah, time. That's right. 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 So are That's we ready to kick I'm this out. up? Are we ready? Because I am ready to share this Stamp Timber exclusive collab with you. So let's get going. Here we are. I can't this wait. right here, I look at this. Let, let me clear off the confetti from the screen. There we go. Gosh, confetti is everywhere. This is the exclusive stamp timber set for 2022 with Simon Says Stamp. Um, and what's great about the collab, for those of you that uh, are familiar with how stamp timber works, again, it is a month long celebration. Simon Says Stamp has been doing this for 13 years, right? It's been 13 years, right, Heidi? I think. Oh, Thir 13, 13 years. 13 yeah. years. Um, so I think it's really been fun to kind of come up with unique collabs. And some people are familiar with how it works and some people aren't, but I'll, I'll explain it. This set is only available at simonsaysstamp.com and only available while supplies last. And we say that because there is a limited production run. They've already been produced. They're already in stock at Simon Says Stamp. Uh, they are available. The link went live uh, at uh, nine o'clock. Well, right now, as soon as we started and, and noon Eastern and once they're gone, they are gone. And we do get people asking, go, will you bring a set back or will you do this? It's just not how this works. This is a celebration, but it's not something that you only have two minutes to buy. Uh, there, there's definitely, we, we hope, you know, inventory for a few hours. So you guys have time to take a look at it. And of course, watch the, uh, the live today and the inspiration. But this set with, with Stampers Anonymous, again, as Heidi mentioned, we collaborate on this. We kind of uh, brainstorm of what we want to bring as far as an exclusive stamp set. I do love the fact that these are clean red rubber. We packed as much as we can uh, into a set for Stamp Timber 2022. Uh, so if you don't like this extra rubber, which I don't, I like to weed my stamp set. So I normally will pull off this whole kind of outer bit here because let me just bring in my set because I've been using my set. Boy, there's confetti everywhere. My word. Um, so this is what I do, right? Because you can just weed this off by just pulling off the back, but this is how it will come. And it also has a stencil. Now the stencil, remember last year we did kind of a cool moon. This is just a, a great little snow flurry stencil. And I wanted to do this because if you caught the Instagram live yesterday, you know that with the seasonal distress, we did an entire tub of the snowfall grit and I love it. Uh, so what better way to add snow than having a stencil that has all of these little dots? And I will tell you that although these look like perfect little circles, you know that I'm far from perfect. So these are actually little wonky dots, right? All different sizes. Great for inking, great for sprays, but also great for that snowfall grit paste or texture paste for that matter. Uh, and you'll see from the makes how, uh, how the makers really have created such amazing inspiration using this exclusive stamp set. Again, only available from simonsaysstamp.com, no place else. This is where uh, you get it. And when it's gone, it is gone for good, all right? So let's get into the inspiration and talk about this set specifically and kind of, I don't know, the inspiration and what we wanted to do. Oh my gosh, really guys, if you saw how much confetti is everywhere, it's quite hilarious. Sorry. It, no, I absolutely <laughs> like it. <laughs> I just didn't realize it was gonna go uh, everywhere. So I mean, I'm gonna throw all these in a, the, the photo props, right? We're gonna take the photo props out. There we go, look at that. See the magic, there it is. You got the money shot, but then, then we're good. Okay, so here's the thing about uh, the set. Whenever we're talking about a stamp set, we really want to keep in mind how different type of makers want to create different things, okay? And one thing that's important, especially around the holiday season is some people are very much uh, traditional Christmas, ho, 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 Santa. And there is a great uh, Santa image here with Santa uh, climbing up this ladder, going in the chimney of this uh, snowy rooftop cabin with the trees, right? But then there's also a winter vibe. So one of the things that I always think is important when you're looking at stamp sets or die sets or really anything that is a set is that you have to kind of look at what it is you like about that, right? It's kind of like back in the day, and of course I'm gonna talk about you know CDs. Now it's like CDs, what? So download. But back in the day, when there was a, an album or an artist, right? A lot of times we would buy that because we liked two or three songs. You didn't necessarily like the entire album, but maybe you learned to like all the songs on that. And I always approach that um, in my creative life as well. When I look at stamps or when I look at anything that's bundled because sometimes people judge me like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like any of it. And I'm like, really? 
You're, you're not even going to be open-minded to go, well, this is what I do like about it, and this is what I'll use, even if it's something that you won't. And we keep that in mind when we're doing a set, because if you're not traditional Christmas, this is a beautiful uh, winter assortment of snowflakes. These are all sketched snowflakes. So these provide some great details, some great scribbly uh, elements, great for mica stain backgrounds, great for coloring it in. And then of course, these words, these sentiments. Now I did the noteworthy set in June and I loved this kind of handwritten font. You've seen that I also uh, included some of these in Halloween. The Halloween sets had the same handwritten. So we wanted to do that and kind of keep that going this year with Stamp Timber. So we have, have yourself a merry little Christmas, believe in the magic, it's the happiest season of all, a wonderful Christmas time. Heidi's favorite, you're on the nice list. Tis the season to be jolly and walking in a winter wonderland. So again, you can either have a very festive holiday uh, Christmas theme or some winter themes. And I just, I love it. I love it, I love it. And when you see the inspiration, it's, it's just gonna blow your mind, it really is. But before I do that, I want to, I want to really talk about my inspiration when I was, uh, sharing this with Heidi last time when she got it, she's like, oh, you're really going to poke the bear. You're going to talk, you're going to go there. I'm like, I am going there. And it should be of no, no surprise to any of you guys that are watching. Right? So one thing to know about this year's stamp timber exclusive is it is from the same artist that did last year's right now, as I've said before, I don't draw any of my images. I license artwork. I look for talented uh, artists out there. At, and I like to license their work. So when we licensed the set last year, the 2021 set, um, with this beautiful Santa and the reindeer, these little trees, that little swoop of, of magical dust, the cloud, and of course this bold font, right? In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. I loved this style and I had my eye on this other image. In fact, I couldn't really choose, but I kept this hidden from Heidi, believe it or not, because I know like any other creative, if you have too many options, it's really hard to choose. So we, we really set on this because we were going for a whole theme. If you even remember the December we did last year with uh, Dash Away All, right? The Santa and the Reindeer. So we were good with that. But I really love this image of Santa. It's bigger and obviously with the Distress watercolor pencils being out, something to color. And I love the aesthetic of both of these. And so if you purchased this set last year. I wanna just share a little feature about this year's set that I kept in mind when I was designing this and keeping things laid out. And what that is, is that this is the image itself, right? So this is the image from this year's set stamped on an A2 card. So you can see that it really fills the frame nice. It has this great fade on the art all the way around. So that goes on there. So a great way that you can stamp it and you can color it. However, if you also have last year's set, you can kind of build on that. Meaning you can take that same A2 and if you wanted to create kind of a, a horizontal or landscape look, you can still stamp that. You can take these trees, right? These little guys right here and you can ink them. And when I went and inked them, I just kind of inked this first part of it, right? This part, I didn't really ink the end one. And I literally just stamped over it. So you have the option when you're going in that you can just stamp over that. You can pick however you want your tree line to go. And you can see how the trees just kind of fade into one another. I didn't do any masking. I did none of that. Literally just inked up part of the tree stamp. I didn't ink the end trees, just kind of that middle section. And I, boom, I stamped it right there. I also took that little bit of swoop where it's like coming out of the chimney, a little magic coming out of there. And how great is that, that you can build on the scene with those those trees now if you wanted to create a bigger card right like maybe i think this is maybe an a6 it's a little bit bigger then obviously your scene could be bigger right you can take this image and you can move it closer to the top you could then add more trees so instead of just the middle section of trees you can see i kind of started from the end I pretty much leave this little guy off the whole time because i didn't want it to go over the roof but it could right if you wanted to stamp and fussy cut you can also stamp some of the trees coming out of the top. Of course, you can include the clouds or whatever, but by creating a bigger scene, you can also take that moon mask that came with last year's set, and you can see that beautiful scale of building a scene. So that's always important when I'm uh, designing that I keep things in mind as far as if, if you purchase something or if you've been with us and you're doing uh, Stamp Timber and you, you have a collab, and not all collabs really build from one another, it's just that this felt right. But 
This is also a great standalone set. So don't be so uh, deterred if you didn't get this where you're like, oh, now that I don't have this, I can't do anything. That's not true. You're gonna see how uh, some of the makers actually utilize these trees to add some additional ones. But I wanted to share that, that little feature that I kept in mind as far as scale, because I know sometimes you like to make bigger cards, slimline cards, and create a whole different type of scene uh, with the stamps. And so you can do that with both 2021 and 2022. But this one, this is the star of today's show, all right? <laughs> this, this stamp set, this stencil, and we're going to get into the makes. And the makes, man, a shout out to all of the makers that created things for this live. We so appreciate it because uh, they created, they shipped their makes here for live. There are makers that uh, didn't get their their stamps in time in order to make something and get it here to us in time. So there's actually gonna be inspiration that you'll see following the live uh, on timholtz.com as well as simonsaysstamp.com. Inspiration for all of the people that participated in making for this Stamp Timber collab. So although their makes won't be in the live, you'll be able to see photos and I'm sure uh, they'll be sharing on social media throughout the weekend. So, so cool. Oh, thanks Nina, she said she loved making with the set. It's like really the, the amount of makes from this set and really I think just the variety of makes is what always blows my mind, especially on something like Stamp Timber because it's a single stamp set. It's not like releasing an entire series of stamps. We have one stamp set. It's like, okay, what is that about? We have like 52 different makes just in live alone. And so there's even more that didn't make it for live. So maybe it's, it's unbelievable. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna talk about kind of uh, the traditional aspect. Now, all of these makers that have uh, created cards for this, we will have, again, their photos and we will also be linking uh, as they post on social. So we, we will have it on the website, but if they happen to link or post on Instagram, on timmoltz.com, you'll be able to click their little thumbnail and it will take you to the Instagram post or if they did a YouTube or a tutorial. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. So Laura created this, Laura Fedora, like just take a look at really the coloring uh, that goes into the stamp. And I think what's really nice about the scene is that however you like to make, maybe you're an inker, maybe you like to just stamp and emboss, maybe you like to color and use pencils. There's so many different ways that you can utilize this set and so many different ways that you can also utilize this stencil, right? Inking a little white through there just to create that nice uh, subtle look of snow. And I love how it just drifts over all of these elements, right? The pine, right? You can see Santa, I love the little sequence. And then of course that little sentiment, believe uh, in the magic. And the sentiment scale of course works for both last year and this year. So it's nice, you're gonna see a lot of makers even mix up uh, their sentiment quite a bit. So beautiful card, right? Love the coloring, I think that's good. And man, the people that can color is like, wow. All right, so Barb created this one, love the coloring. I love these beautiful winter skies, right? I will say that my card is, is not a, a beautiful blue winter sky. Mine is a brown sky, but that shouldn't surprise anyone. But I love just that little splattering of snow where you kind of mix in the stencil, where you can see the stencil is really used uh, in the background, really faded, and then that little splatter over the top. And I love that uh, Believe in Magic. I like how it's just kind of a bubble cut around there, right? But look at that, beautiful coloring skills. And you can see that having this little cabin, you can either, like I showed you on the, the beginning, you can have that stamp kind of floating inside, or of course you can move that off to the right or left because it is sized not only for cards, but will also work on tags, like a number eight tag, right? You can really kind of crop out whatever element of that image you want for your tags. Beautiful. Coloring is like, whoop, whoop, so good. So Callie did this one. Take a look at that. This is where I love uh, that stencil, right? Sometimes you want a lot of snow. Sometimes you want a little bit. Take a look at that with a little, little grit in there, a little grit paste, any kind of texture. You can do grit paste. You can do a little bit of texture paste. You can do any type of flocking that you might have, but it is nice just to create that winter vibe and really interesting that like, I do think that this image I, I'm always fascinated by this. You guys know that from the lives, right? I'm always fascinated when completely different makers really resonate with very similar things. And I do agree that like, this is a very magical kind of scene. And so that they all use believe in magic for this out of, out of all the sentiments, I think is it's, it's cool because it is magical, right? I just, I love that. And I really, I love the fact that it's a, a ladder going up there because it's a, it's a pretty steep, rooftop for this cabin. Cindy created this one. So take a look at these colors. This is where that, 
You can uh, do a circle, you can do a moon mask. I love the contrast of this dark night sky. It really makes the colors pop on this as well. But you can see, look at that wonderful little sparkly snow. Because if you have the, the distress set from last year, we did do snowfall last year, right? It was just in a little tub. But look at this fussy cutting, right? That tree that's layered on there. Wow, this is all cut and layered. Even this ladder, you know me, like I'm so impressed when people just, they do fussy cutting because I'm not that guy. I wish I had the patience. I could do it, but I couldn't do it this well. Because by the time I got to this ladder, I would essentially just cut it off and be like, yeah, okay, he's just floating in midair. But look at that. It, it definitely adds a, a whole bit of dimension and, and detail to this, right? Setting the scene. And you're gonna see, again, through all of this inspiration, uh, the amazing versatility, not only in, in image choice, but also in color. And really what you can kind of uh, mix and match with things. So Barbara created this, and this is what I was saying about uh, mixing and matching, right? You can take something like the scene, and again, I mean, seriously, these cutting skills, they're like, just hand me the scissors and step back and just watch what, what happens. Because I do love the layering in this, but I also love incorporating die cuts. Any dies that you have, any word dies that you have, mixing and matching by taking that, and I love this, I think this is a Simon die, right? That beautiful believe, and then just using just the, in the magic, right? Getting a little creative with your stamping and, and stamping that out and embossing. But how beautiful is that? Again, the colors, mm, mm, mm. you're gonna see Copic coloring, you're gonna see ink coloring, you're gonna see pencil coloring, but hopefully what you'll see is inspiration. Inspiration of when you have this stamp set, what you can do with it, how you can use it, and what you can use it with in your, in your stash, right? So Yuko created this card. I love that winter scene. I love, again, you've seen some of these older dies. These are older Sizzix dies with those little stars kind of cut out. We saw this with Otis as well, uh, Halloween using those little stars. But I love how wintry this is. So this is kind of, you know, coloring where you can just do light coloring, but leave most of this stuff white. And this is what I was saying about taking the stamp and kind of doing it in repetition, right? Where you can still just ink up part of this, this kind of upper part, and you can stamp and mask and layer and really create uh, a beautiful forest and build on top of that, right? Because if you look right here, this big tree is really this big tree, just stamped again. So often when you're kind of stamping and overlaying, and that's another thing that I find very fascinating when it comes to how artists work, is paying attention to like their pen lines or stroke and also how the image fades out. By not having a harsh edge around here, it certainly uh, opens it up for creating layers without doing a significant amount of masking. But isn't that just so cool. And just using the stencil, just because it's an entire uh, snow flurry stencil, you don't have to lay it down and paste from, from top to bottom. I mean, we just did this in a square so you can just go in and, and just move it around and add little snow flurries wherever you want on the card, right? Just adding a little bit of texture. So good. Love that. A wonderful Christmas time. Then Keisha created this. See? Again, that scene. And when you see the scene, especially when you normally see it you know, on that vertical card layout. It is nice to also see it uh, this way and kind of taking that. Again, these trees right here, these trees are these trees, right? So you can still just kind of stamp the top of those if you don't have last year's. I just wanted you to know that if you wanted to build that, you could, but it is nice that you can kind of create all types of, of different layouts with the set, right? Versatility, variety, so good. I love the coloring, I do. And I love, like, look at that. That just, that's like some clear embossing, just a little clear embossing so it'll just kind of catch the light. You can use your clear embossing powder, pearl embossing powders, all of that. I think it's, it's just good. And I mean, and seeing so far just how many, I don't know, just, just different ways that people have colored like this single image is, is pretty incredible to me, right? I think so. What do you think, Heidi? I love it. I think it's good. So Heidi, it, have I been abandoned? I think I might have been. Like, okay, well, it's just me. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. So let's talk about how we can use the wintry side because there is definitely a wintry side to this stamp set. And another card by Keisha, and this is what I always love about Keisha, is just like not afraid of color, going bold, going strong, going fun, and really using this. So take a look at just how rich and red and beautiful this card is. So here we have uh, that embossed, embossed snowflake beautiful those layers and i love the red right who said snowflakes had to be blue keisha didn't nope 
and you're going to see there's some great colorful cards. So this is hopefully inspiring you. I say it all the time. You do you, right? You go in and just create what you're so interested in creating. Whatever you're drawn to, do it. And I think that's, that's the power of creativity and the power of, of being a maker, right? Sydney created this, and this is what I was saying about taking an image and embossing. If you like to just do an ink blended background, how beautiful is this that you can go in and just stamp and emboss in white, create that beautiful winter vibe. I love that little bit of texture from the snowfall, those little uh, sparkly sequins there, those little mirror, and then believe in the magic. So a great way to incorporate just inking in an image because just because an image is detailed, right? Sometimes people think, oh, I don't want that, I don't color, done. That's where inspiration comes in. It reminds you that there's so many different ways to use a stamp and I think that's why we also love to celebrate Stamp Timber because we see the versatility of a stamped image and what it can do and how you can interpret that to your creative style, right? But look at that beautiful embossing in white. You're gonna see, really, makers just use this set like so, <laughs> so different, so cool. Now Mindy created this, I love just the subtlety of this, right? I love that beautiful blended background, those purples, of course, really stunning, that little fade, but the image is there. Can you see that? The image is just, it's in there in black and then just highlighted with a little bit of white. So it really creates, like you have to take a closer look just to kind of be drawn into this wonderful winter scene. And that's where I love the image and that snow and how you can do that. It's cool to see how people use color, right? Because they're not afraid of it, that's for sure. Taking that and just incorporating that image to what meets their style. And not everything is about a stamped image, right Heidi? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick this back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you because you're here and I can do that, right? Because I can. Very so, excited to be here. It's been busy. I've been seeing them like zipping around behind the scenes. <laughs> so I hope that that's all for good things. It's all yes. Good. Everything's good. It's good. It's good chaos, right? We wanted to make sure there was a picture of what you were showing at the same time available on the website. Let me, we have let more. Me. Oh my gosh. I even have... <laughs> there, there, I'm just going to pick some confetti out of her hair. So I think yeah. you came over here to talk a little bit too about how stamping, it's not, you can do so much with stamping. You can embosh, you can use stencils, you can use texture paste. I, and I think that's what's special about Tim's Stamp Timer exclusive is that he did include a stencil that works so beautifully with the rest of the set, but it also works great with the other stamps you might already have. Yep. And then in the stamp set, there are sentiments and snowflakes, and I love to embellish snowflakes. You'll see that a little bit later, but I actually did she do a make for made. this. I, we both did it, a make for this. And we you didn't did. Even, you did we, multiples. We didn't even know that. We were just, but yeah. like when you're inspired, I mean, I've said it before, and it's like when you're inspired, you just, you got to give into that. You really do because Absolutely. we're all busy and we can all make every excuse we can of why we don't have time to make. You have to make time to make, make, make yeah. time to make. Well, I've, that's the advice I've heard you say before, Tim, that I, Sarah, who works in my office, just came up to me last week. She's like, you know, Tim has given me, Sarah, if you're watching us live, hello. <laughs> hello. She's like, Tim really has empowered me to make because I, we used to put, I used to do the same thing, put this pressure to sit down and start a project from start to finish. Yeah. And really, if you do your compartmentalizing making where mm -hmm. you do backgrounds or yeah. you sort your goods or you take ideology and you put the holiday in one place and decorate maybe your studio with the Christmas ideology, yeah. it inspires you to be creative. And, and it's what it's all about. It takes really. the pressure off. I think so many yeah. times we put too much pressure on ourselves as far as uh, sitting down and needing to make with an expectation, right? Expectation leads to disappointment. It really does for yourself and for anyone else. Like you can't put your expectation on others and you can't put expectation on yourself. You just have to enjoy the process. Yeah. So, have all right. fun. We're going to get back okay, into more Okay, show some more makes because you've got a big stack. So though. good. You've got a lot of so them. So good. All right. So as Heidi was saying, like being inspired and creating different things, you can be inspired to just do you, right? And that's what Susan did. She's like, you know what? Hey, thanks for the stamp. The stamp's great, but I'm just going to do me because really I was, I was inspired by the stencil and I wanted to really showcase how I wanted to use the stencil in so many different ways. And obviously channeling her color palette, what she wanted to do. And she incorporated not only the stencil, but these great verses. And I love just seeing how you can take a stencil and use it in so many different ways, right? Whether you're doing foiling or flocking or pairing it with an embossing folder, adding your little sparkles, right? Just really playing up the color, 
the sparkle all based on this pattern because the pattern can inspire you. Even if you're just sitting down, applying this stencil to different papers in different colors and then cutting it up later to put it on cards, this is what we were saying, the power of play. The power of just sitting there going, you know what? I don't know. I don't want to get out of stamp. I don't want to... I don't want to have to do with that, but you know what? I like the stencil and I want to play with my embossing powders or uh, my paste or my foils or any of that. And then you can assemble uh, some amazing cards and really play around with different pattern papers, uh, different metallics. I just think it's really beautiful. And I love that. I love seeing how a maker can be inspired to use what they want, how they want. That's just what I say. That's the part that's just so important to hopefully inspire you guys to to remember that that you need to go in and just play and don't be afraid of it really so when it comes to color i'm going to bring these in because i i saw them because jen sent in a bunch of cards as well um and and i always love color right i don't necessarily use color my favorite color is brown no surprise there but i love seeing how people incorporate color and really play with it and stay true to their style and so she created these cards and I, I also love just the versatility of of the ideas that's the other thing right you just let the ideas kind of take you so here you can see where she stamped i love the bright colors on the trees i love that kind of uh, purple sky just fading into that lavender i love how this stencil just kind of mimics the the line of that right i also like that little extra bit of a paste and glitter and a little sparkle on there but take a look at kind of how she created these other cards using just the snowflakes. And this is what I was saying. Again, even if this one image, you're like, you know what? I'll never use that image. That's okay. If you're going to use the rest of this, that to me is, is value, right? Because it's going to be something that, that you like and you want to use. But I love the, the pattern play of just incorporating snowflake stamps, right? So when you see this, it's, it's great where you can just sit down, whether you're stamping with mica stain, whether you're stamping with pencils, whether you're stamping with ink pads, and just let your creativity run wild. Even if you started with a sheet of paper and you're just stamping at random and then you cut apart that paper and they become card fronts. That's it. You don't have to figure it all out from, from the go. And I also like seeing the different compositions, right? Because sometimes you think, okay, that, that snowflake needs to, it's gonna go right in the center with a word, and it can, right? But often you can say, oh, I wonder what happens if I just stamp it up the border. Well, there you go. It's done. I think that the more we can, can get over ourselves, right, and not be so critical of what we're doing, you know that seeing this, it's going to be amazing for whoever gets these cards, right? That, that to me is, is super important. And, the, and it's easier said than done. I get that. I know it's really easy to say, oh, get over yourself, because I know the first time Mario told me that, like, it didn't sit well with me for a while. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean get over was, myself? It so, it supposed to be nice. But it, it stuck with me. Like but it stuck with me because I was like, you know what? You, there's, there's truth in those words because why am I being so critical of something? Because everybody has different tastes in everything from fashion to food to, to style and certainly uh, in creativity. But embracing it all and, and taking it for what it is and being inspired by different elements of each thing, that's what it's about. That's what it's about, being inspired, right? So Tiffany created these. I love seeing uh, different types of mediums being used with stamps, right? So alcohol ink, using alcohol lifting to take that and then stamping with what you lifted off and creating a second card with that. That's a nice thing about uh, doing alcohol lift ink on Yupo or a synthetic paper and then stamping it on a glossy cardstock. So essentially lifting the ink off of here, stamping it here, but then getting this wonderful kind of ghosted image, just stunning cards. And it's amazing to see how much purple, right? So much purple being used. And I love that. I love just people having a good time with color. Of course, embossing powder. If you, if you haven't cracked out your embossing powders in a while, now's the time to do it, right? Use those metallics, the golds, the silvers, the tinsels, or your embossing glazes. Just play around with uh, different colors and different styles and layouts. I also love the splatter and then just put it on a card base, right? You don't need to add a million embellishments if you don't want to, right? But you certainly can, because you're going to see that we even have like some mixed media pieces using the set. There's so many possibilities for a stamp. That is the celebration of Stamp Timber. But as I've said before, it's always so surprising when I get makes from a maker and I see this, and then I get another make from the maker, same maker. And this just reinforces what I was 
saying and what Heidi and I were talking about and what I've always said to you guys, which is just follow your muse. You do you in that moment. So many times that it's like this quest for style, this quest for what is my style? What kind of maker am I? What do I do? I see this. Oh, I shouldn't do that because I don't normally make tags or I don't normally use brown. But if, if you're thinking it in your head, you should do it. And that's what I think is so great when you're making that you can sit down and create these and then create this or create this and then create these either way. But my point being that the same maker just can, can go in and Tiffany's like, yeah, I'm going to make a tag and I'm going to color and I'm going to use uh, grungier things. And I'm going to just do a different type of scene completely different from that style because you don't have to fit into any mold. You don't, you do you and your creativity doesn't have to fit there either. It could just be whatever inspires you, even if you've never done it before. And people are going to be so shocked at this. Yeah, that's great. But it's no surprise because Tiffany does just amazing things going from grungy to bright, right? That's why it's like I'm giving myself a pep talk going, okay, get brighter, Tim, do some brighter colors. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. No promises, but I will work on that. <laughs> so another thing, of course, is when we talk about uh, different type of texture foundations. And I, when I was sorting these last night, when I was taking all the makes and, and looking at them, I don't like to do a deep dive into what it is, but I kind of try to just to kind of create a theme. So like you saw the purples, because I was like, it's amazing how many people use purples. I need to put those together because I think that that really reinforces the message. But this one is like, it was amazing how many people use some type of transparency, whether it's a shaker, right? So Joy created this. You know I love a good shakety shake, boo, I do. Shakety shake, little, little glitter, little sequence just in that pouch. But then there's also a little thinger. Oh man, a little, a little, a little wibbly bit. What is this thing called? Come on. Is it? It's a Wibbly. No, it's a Wibbly. A Wobbler. Wobbler. Dang it. Yes. It's a better way to just call it's it a, a thingy. Yeah. Action Wobbler. Oh, Action oh, Wobbler. Good thing Heidi's here. Well, see, we could do one just calling it a Wibbly bit. But this little Wibbly bit, because that's what it does, like an Action Wobbler. Action that's Wobbler. A, see, that's probably why. That's a lot to say. But I love just a little bit of, of play. And so you can see just layering that over over the card for the recipient, like me, it's just fun. Just do the little wibbly bit. So yeah, <laughs> the wobbler, it's a thinger. Um, but yes, I think it's really cool to see how you can take, and I love this kind of shaker, right? Because this shaker, just using that, that acetate sleeve, whether it's a, a card pouch or uh, a shaker pocket, it's really nice if you're, if you're not good like me where you can you know, use the, the foam tape. And I really struggle with that when I have to like build the little window, the box and pour it in and, uh, but putting it in a bag, Right? It's like a little shake and bake on a card. Maybe you guys don't remember shake and bake, but yeah, it's like a shake and bake on a card. I don't, I only saw the commercial, I don't cook. But <laughs> nevertheless, see, there you go, a little wibbly bit. I need to put this down, that's, that's my problem. That's my problem with that. Um, Nicole created this one. So how beautiful to do this overlay, right? This taking that little bit of transparency, that acetate right there, and that's where the snowflakes are, that's where the sentiment goes, and you can stamp those right so you stamp it in a white ink you can do embossing if you have a, a thermal acetate and create that layer over something that is colored a great way to use all of the images in in the set right by taking that and then overlaying this and i think that's a, a great way just attached it with a little bit of ribbon just kind of punch through on the top it's a beautiful beautiful way to create a layered card and have this kind of floating thing right really nice using acetate i think yeah i mean everyone everyone just does different things right so jennifer created these i love seeing again that play in color but also this this entire card front is acetate so this is a thicker acetate where the card base is is an acetate and then you get to put a card in there but there you can see that inking little sparkles little splatters little stamping and then just the white embossing and how wintry and powerful uh, that is on the card as well as stamping the snowflakes, right? Same idea, and then including a die cut. That's another thing I always like to remind makers of. If you have an idea, celebrate that idea. Play that idea. Don't think like, mm, that's all right. Put that song on repeat, right? Put that idea on repeat and think, how can I use this and what can I use with it just to, to create that, the same color background? Because again, repetition, right? You can get into that compartmental creativity, ink your backgrounds, do your splattering, do all of this, 
And then you start building, you start taking all these other elements and creating unique pieces, even if they follow the same theme. But yeah, I just, I love the overlay of that. I love the, the double die cut in there too, right? It's just, it's cool. And this one, look at that, magic. The, the whole engineering thing where it's like, okay, we're gonna open this way. Yeah, oh, you think so? And then I'm gonna open this way because you thought you knew, no, see? You can just do so much with your materials just to make it unique for each idea that you want to do. And that's what this is, right? This, this live is to inspire. Yes, it's the set, but seeing how this set works, that is, that is the inspiration. So another, I love this. It's these little shakety pockets, right? So Heather created this. So this, I, again, you know, card and envelopes. I don't see many uh, envelopes unless they're tifas and they're all decked out. So seeing kind of the card in the envelope, Right, just using that, that's a, great, that's a great stamp alone just to put on an envelope, right? Even if you were just getting that stamp, right? Really good. But there again, another little shakety shake. This time the entire card front is one of those pockets and I love seeing that. I love this is, I love the mica flakes in there, right? So, just so snowy. I'm a huge fan of mica flakes, I do. I love that. I love that you can get all that snow sitting at the bottom, right? Right on that line of the house. And then you can have it uh, move around, but beautiful, beautiful card. Heather and I love the envelope, which you made too. Completely different. There you go. Again, taking that great decoration on an envelope, stamping those snowflakes and take a look at this card, right? Look at the background and look at that crackle. Mm, mm, mm. That icy look. I think beautiful. you're a fan of confetti today. Well, it's You're everywhere. It. I know. I'm sh and I've been digging it out too. Like when I when I look, there's like little bits of confetti. Like I'll just take it out of the card before I bring it on. It does go I everywhere. Think I shocked you. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Thing. We'll see it for a while. Yeah, I think you did, dude. It was loud, uh, but beautiful. I love that crackly finish. It's just. It's so. I don't know. It's so inspiring to see how people, how people make and how people do things, uh, completely different, right? So, Kathy Z because Kathy Z is like, that's one word, right? Kathy Z is just, is one word. That's how it is. So here, I, I love this card. I love that, that cutting landscape just to create that little, little drop shadow because that, that's forced perspective right there, just to bring that in. So you got the foreground and the background, but no surprise that, that Kathy would do that. I love seeing the color. I love the snow and I think the snow on your trees is perfect, Kathy. I do. I love that. I love seeing that texture of the snow flurries from that stencil, beautiful coloring, believe in magic. And then boom, let me send you, Breath let me send you this card too. Taking. I know. Heidi, Heidi was like, I love this. She's like, the colors are so beautiful. I'm I like, could just sit and make that card for days. You see that? Just blending. And I love, I love just really how it's like, it really draws your eye into that one snowflake because of the colors. And then it just fades out to winter wonder. Right. And look at that little vellum. Look at those little droplets, beautiful, right? And look at that little sparkle, see? But again, same maker, completely different ideas. A departure into Wonderland really is what it is. And I think it, it's just beautiful. So whether you're a color or whether you're an inker, mm, 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 that to me is, that's good stuff right there. That is good stuff. I'm going to kick this back. We're going to, we're going to keep chatting. I'm going to keep going back. And I like to just bring Heidi in because I oh. like, it's like, I have a guest in the studio. Mario's always here. Mario's, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a good guest. Mario's not a guest. Mario's a live-in. So there is that. But I, 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 I just think crap. that like, does it, it's not an interview. So don't feel like I'm going to see. She's like, what are you going to ask me? Here's the thing. I think that when you get to see firsthand the inspiration that something like Stamp Timber does it really rallies the industry into focusing on a specific medium right uh, uh, amen to that and uh, can i take a minute to answer some questions i keep seeing yes. in the chat while tim's going please do so a lot of people are asking <laughs> in the chat if the stencil comes with the stamps and yes it does it's only available together and they're perfect this is a good opportunity for us to thank stampers anonymous because we have all of these stamps and stencils already on our shelves at in Simon stock. Says stamp in stock Shipping right away. We're ship. We're going to start shipping on Monday when our shipping team gets back into the office. It is a limited edition. We bought about I think 10% more than we did last year. Last year we sold out in seven hours. Wow. So I'm I'm hoping that you guys like it enough that there's that, that you buy them, but that it doesn't sell it too quickly. It's kind of this like delicate balance. It's, of, it takes well, a team. Well, first of all, I mean you. you 
you yeah. need a crystal ball you to can get it right. You can only do what you can do. And can yeah, do and, and to Heidi's point, a shout out to the, the whole crew at Stampers Anonymous. Uh, they're in Cleveland, Ohio. You're in Columbus, Ohio. They rocked um, it. Like the fact that they created all of these, packaged them all, delivered them all. So you had everything ready to ship on Monday. There is like no delay, which I think is good. But yes, it is the stamp and stencil together. So what I showed at the beginning, that is what you get. And that's why you can see, I think, the versatility of that. Because to me, when it comes to tools, right? And I've said this as a maker forever. Anything that you purchase, you are investing in a tool. Be that an ink pad, a stamp, a die cut, whatever that is. But in order for that tool to be of benefit, you have to use it. So this is to inspire you to use. use. Yeah. Creativity is not a spectator sport. You Come can, on in, you can, no, you can look at that the whole time and you can be like, oh, I love that. I love that. I don't know. I don't, but when people go, I don't know what to make like that, the amount of time that the makers put into that and all of the energy from the behind the scenes side of getting, uh, samples for live. It's really because I completely agree. Like sometimes when you see a product and you don't see the inspiration right away, it's, some people can connect the dots, right? Some people can look at that and be like, oh, I, I have a million ideas of what to do with that. And others are like, I like it, but I don't know what to do with it. And the point of something like this is really to, to spark that inspiration from go and be like, here is what you can do with it when you get it. And that's why in addition to this live being on replay, you're going to be able to go to uh, timholtz.com. You're going to be able to see all these makes. There's going to be links. If, if that particular maker did a, a tutorial or an in-depth look at it, I know that you have a newsletter going out with all of these makes. So we want to continue to inspire that long after this, live this is really just a celebration yes it's a party okay <laughs> no more confetti back to the party there's still more makes oh my gosh back to the party <laughs> all right so looking at, at the the versatility card makers really have all different types and styles and sharon there again you see just a whole variety of styles i love the color i love the layering i love the embossing uh, of this and it's really interesting right because again you saw Keisha's card with just that really rich red and you've seen the purple cards and now just seeing like this wonderful fuchsia pink wintry Christmas card. So good. But Sharon, like she's like, I I'm not afraid of color. You, you watch and see what I can do. I love this rainbow sky. Sharon also did this card, right? Just using your inks and creating a beautiful background sky with that stencil and adding the color and adding the layers in that just doing a little bit of watercolor but a great way to use your inks because they don't always have to be blue. doesn't always have to be green. doesn't always have to be red. It could be whatever you're inspired to be. And again, you can take parts and pieces of this set and mix and match. So Sharon created this. This is one of the, uh, the new Sizzix dies that'll be uh, released next week. And I love just seeing how those can be layered over an inky background, right? stamped you can see those snowflakes in the back like look at all that beautiful color how fun is that and this is where this stencil it just comes into play right you just lay a little bit there put a little bit there put a little bit there that's why you know typically when i do stencils uh with stampers anonymous we kind of do the tag but when heidi and i were talking we're like we just wanted something that was a little bit more playful where you didn't feel like it wasn't a specific size where you're like okay i'm going to put it on a card front oop it doesn't really fit because it kind of forces you to be like, well, it's not necessarily meant to be a blizzard. It's really meant to just use those little, those little dots in different ways. And again, I think when you see medium going through it, even paste, now you start to pick up on the wonkiness, right? They're not perfectly punched circles. I didn't really want that. I, I like that. I like to embrace the wonkiness, right? And then Sharon is like, yeah, but don't get too comfortable with this whole colorful world because I can get my grunge on just like you and... There you have it, the browns, the blues, uh, the patinas, the teals, the greens, and the mica, just, it's so good, right? It's so good just to see how you can incorporate images and color. I love the mica on the card. See that little, so the distressed mica flakes for the win. Just adds that beautiful look to the background. I agree, it is so good. It is so good. Just, yeah, you just kind of mix them all up. So yeah, a maker, it's like, oh, make a card. Yeah, I'll make four. And I love that. Bring on the inspiration, right? The more we see, uh, the more we're kind of inspired to create. So Kathy created this. And this is where, like, when I saw this, it's like, okay, this is a card. I get this. But this is like 
this should go in a frame, right? Because sometimes you'll make something, and I think we can all agree that sometimes we sit down to make something and it just transforms into something that is just bigger than itself. And I, I love the fact that you could send a dimensional card, but I also think that a lot of times things are just worth framing. And sometimes people go, well, it's just a card. Yet yeah, it's a work of art. I mean, seeing images and every card could be a work of art. I think it, doing those little frames is really, it turns it into a display piece. But look at the, the mixed media approach with this set, right? There's crackle down here, right? We've got bobbles in there, little glitter, the droplets, little metallic droplets. You can see that little sheen. That's the mica stain. I love Distress mica stain. You can see just how beautiful uh, that radiates that cardstock, right? And then just the idea of like tearing up those layers and ripping this. And this style isn't for everyone. I get that. But sometimes people want to just get mixed media and don't know like how do I kind of, how do I blend both things together? Well, you can. You just you just play around. Don't limit yourself. Just wherever your inspiration takes you, takes you. How are you going to mail this? I don't know. Probably a bubble mailer or a box because you don't want those, those bobbles coming off. But this should be mailed uh, with a frame so they can display it because that, yeah, beautiful. But you can see just how the colors can work. And that's another thing about snowflakes. And, you know, snowflake stamps, there's a bazillion different styles. And I think that's why we love them uh, this time of year because, you know, no snowflake is exactly the same. But I also love the sketchiness of the ones that we did for uh, this collab because you can stamp it in its entirety. But even if you stamp to where it fades away, where you don't get the perfect impression, I love that because it, it does. It kind of gives you that illusion that it's fading in and out from, from the background. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I don't know what these little nuggety bits are. I don't know. But I, these are baubles, but these are little nuggety bits. They're cool. I like it. What are these little nuggety bits? I don't know. Do you think they're the little bob? No, they're too small to yeah. be bobbles. I don't know. But if they were Pop Rocks, I would eat them. They look like nerds. I would eat those too. But <laughs> yeah, see, I can, yeah, I can, I can only think candy. All right. So I needed to get in on the game because I was incredibly inspired. So yes, I made a card. So Yay, I, I hope you, I hope you're sitting down. Uh, it's nothing special, but this is what I wanted to do because obviously with uh, the Distress Pencils, I love them. I'm not a good color. I've told you that many, many times, but I love um, how you can really take something and kind of do your own thing. And I love brown. So there's nothing wrong with a brown wintry sky, in my opinion. I love that. So this, I just stamped an archival. All of this is done with the Distress Watercolor Pencils, let it dry and stamped again. This is what I demoed when, when, I, when we did the first uh, launch of the pencils where you do double stamping, you stamp, you color, and you stamp again. Um, but I really like really what the pencils allowed me to do. So all the snow was just using uh, the white pencil over the top. Of course, I added this. I know it looks dimensional, but it isn't, guys. I didn't cut anything because that <laughs> would require, well, we've already been there. I just don't. I didn't even cut out the sentiment. See, I don't mind stamping it on the side. My only tip is that if you're going to do an image like this and you plan on adding snow or, or texture, just mask it. So I just put a little post-it here, right? Or a little post-it here, wherever I didn't want snow because even though I would try to control the palette knife, you know, I didn't want it to go over a letter. That's all I did. This I used Snowfall. The other thing to remember about that Snowfall grip paste is if you're putting it over an inked background, inked, an inked background, it's going to absorb that color of ink as it dries. So if you look here, this top area takes on some of that brown ink, which I want, right? I love the fade of not only the ink, but how that, that paste actually supports the fade of color. It doesn't look like, oh, look at all these white spots over the brown. I like that. Some people don't like that. If you don't, you can seal it with microglaze before you did it. But also the pencils don't lift the color, right? So when I put it over the green trees, because this is a pigment, this didn't absorb the color. So just some things to keep in mind, just a lot of fun. I will tell you another cheat. Um, I'm not a good sewer, right? I like to play the part, but I don't. And maybe some of you are really amazing. I just saw Paulina goes, you stitched, but, but here's my hack, right? I don't know if it's really a hack. It's probably more of a cheat. I don't ever want to risk what I did with sewing, right? I cannot sew like Zoe. I cannot sew like Paula where I can follow a line. That just doesn't happen. So what I do, is I start with a piece of paper that I want to be the frame, and that is what I sew on. This way, if I screw it up, that's okay. I'll get another piece of paper, but I didn't screw up what I just spent all the time stamping and coloring and all of that. I also think in, in order to hide my, 
Look at that. My sewing ineptness, I always sew twice over a line, meaning I'll sew around it and then I'll just do it again following the same line because this way, like, see, it just kind of plays with your eye. Truth. He puts the paper in and he steps on the gas. This is what I do. All the way. It's just what I and do. The and the paper I... comes flying out the back. <laughs> But that, but I like that because so it's a one shot deal. Boom, to me, it, it just works. But again, some people, you know, they don't want to sew because yeah, you do risk like, well, what if I screw this up? Then I got to start all over. Well, right. But in this case, it's just a sacrificial piece of cardstock and I can still probably trim that, you know, to another size, maybe for a tag and then sew down there. You're so the machine doesn't fly off the table. Listen, I like it. You got to get your, got to get your sew on. But anyway, I, I do love the pencils for that. And as with anything else, I was inspired just to also show the wintry side. So I did this card as well. Two cards. I know. That's why I said, I hope you're sitting down. This isn't about me, but I, I was inspired to make and, and I had time, which was also really nice. So this, I did just a quick alcohol ink wash on a piece of Yupo, right? Literally put some blending solution down, three little drips of alcohol ink, use the air blower, have it move around, embrace the space, done. Then I did lift ink on those snowflakes. I didn't do what Tiffany did and stamp those, although now I wish I would've. Then I would've had two cards. I would've had three cards made. But I just did the lift ink on there. And then again, this is just stamped in archival. I could've embossed. I could've done a lot of things. And that's the other thing. As makers, you have to remember, you could always do a lot, but just be happy with what you, you did. Here I incorporated the Walking in a Winter Wonderland, but I did the trees from last year because I don't mind taking this and that and making something new because I do love the perspective of that. And I think there again, sometimes people are new to alcohol ink and they're like, I don't know how to use it or I use too much or I'm not really good with my backgrounds. Well, try this. Cut a card panel, put a couple drips of blending solution, a couple drips of color, blow it around. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit and embrace the space. Let things overlap. Let things bleed off the edge. You're good to go. Then I just did a little thread, a little ideology because I do love those sparkly snowflake charms. Diamonds. Yeah. Sparkle cardstock little black. That's it. See, I'm not a great card maker, but I, it, I have fun and that's okay. That's, that's what you need to do is have fun. All right. Then we get into just, uh, Kathy did this one as well. And I know that for the, the other makers, I've kind of kept them together, but Kathy's who did the one with, you know, the bobbles and all the, I can bring this back in. Like Kathy all, Cowles all the next, just... right. Kathy Cowles. Yeah. And, and everyone I've been kind of using first names cause there's a lot of names, but um, again, everyone will be linked on the blog so you'll know who made what and you'll be able to go on their social. But uh, Kathy made both of these, but I was like, I, I don't want to go from this right into this. It's a shocking departure. Again, how different uh, makers could, could utilize the set. But I love uh, the festive vibe of this. Again, the plaids, the velvet trim, the colors, the, the snow, just it's very cool to see uh, layers done. Again, a much larger scale right? Using these pieces that could easily go into a frame or on a clipboard. Clipboards are also a really great way to display cards. So when you think about that, if you're creating cards, it's really great if you, if you have a source for clipboards to give uh, the recipient a clipboard because they can change out the card, right? Kind of do a card advent on a, on a clipboard. I love that. Beautiful big cards. And then we get into a little bit of the grungy side because you know, you know, we've seen a lot of color, but we also know that there's a lot of makers that just like to get their grunge on just like I do love the Brown. Uh, and Cassie created this love the idea for the gift tag. This is what I was saying about the scale of this image, right? You saw it go on a card front, but because it's a scene, it doesn't mean you have to use this entire image because it works really well where it bleeds off all the sides, right? So taking a tag, whether you want to do a gift tag, whether you're going to cut chipboard tags, whether you're doing a number eight, a number five, you can just, do this over pattern paper, right? This is a subtle uh, background. You can do inking, you can do stamping, you can use clipping stickers and just literally stamp the image in a color and you're done, right? So those are beautiful gift tags and I like how this scene doesn't lose any of its magic, if you will. It just allows you to kind of focus on a specific part of that. So that's a cool thing to see because we've seen big cards, we've seen the whole thing used and seeing that image just kind of uh, compartmentalize. That's really what it's about. And fades around it are also uh, super important. And Cassie created this card as well. And now it's like, okay, so here is the whole image here that is used, but take a look at how, when we talk about the power of a stamp, right? And how stamps can be used in so many different ways, taking this and adding uh, an ink over the background, right? Doing water, layering a plaid, using those snowflakes really faint. That's another tip. If you're new to stamping, or if it's just something that 
I mean, gosh, I've been stamping, I don't know, a long time. I would say since dinosaurs roamed the earth, but not that long. But I think when it comes to stamping, sometimes we forget the simplest things that we learn, which is not everything has to be stamped with the same intensity, right? So if you're stamping snowflakes, if this image is stamped in, in black, if you want these to look like they're in the background, you can't really stamp them in the same intensity. So you can ink it up in a lighter color or lightly ink the stamp and kind of stamp off and get a second and third generation. So there's imagery there, but it still appears in the background. And I think that's great. Look at all that, that color. Again, that vintage, see, it has such a warmth to it, right? <laughs> so good. So, so good. This set is definite magic. It is, it is festive, festive magic. Susie created this. If you are a fan of the chapter three launch, like I am, you know, the little folders, the little coin envelopes, all of those things. Keep that in mind when it comes to making things for the holiday season, right? Making a little, a little card holder. This could even be a gift card holder. Taking that, using your mica stains, look at, the, look at the color, right? Doing your stamping, you've got that window, look at that little stitching around there, where you stitch that, that mica. So this is a mica tile that could be ripped and torn and uh, cut very thin, so it's like a little fractured window. And then she's got that image stamped on vellum on the inside, so it has a reveal. That's a little stitch scrap from Ideology. But what a great way to, to take stamps and make something smaller. Again, this could be a, you know, a $5 Starbucks gift card that you're going to give to coworkers. But instead of just handing them that, it, it, you create something. And that, again, could be repetition. You're stamping your paper, inking your paper, and then you're die cutting it. And now it gave it uh, a unique shape to it. So I love that. Very cool. And you could do a whole series of this. Again, that compartmental making, right? Even if you die cut first, you ink first, you stamp. Uh, however it works for you, just make it work. That's the best. Vicky created this, right? This has like a vintage dreamy uh, vibe to it, right? But I'm gonna, I'll show you something else. And you guys have seen it if you've already seen uh, the Sizzix Christmas uh, image release, right? The, the dies don't actually go on sale until October 1st. So that's actually next week, uh, next Saturday. But this is one of the new dies. This is uh, the tag. So this is the tag where you can actually deboss that color. Just like the vintage labels that we did in chapter three, there's a tag die that does it where you have different size tags. And Vicky did that where she cut out the tag. I love that inked edging around it that's debossed. And then you've got that image in there. So again, when you're inking this up, if you want to stamp on something smaller, you can either mask it off before you stamp or just ink in the center of your image and stamp it and then die cut the tag, right? Or if you're just doing tags, ink that edge, let it fade out. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit and that's it. And I love seeing all the different texture, right? You see the burlap. Now, this is, again, old ideology. Look at these washers. These are old ideology. These things need to come back. I love them. They're these little flat discs that you can put it on uh, with a brad, and oh, I love that. Look at the, the craft stock, right? Just giving it a little sanding. It's just a really charming vintage vibe, and I love the idea of texture, textile, fabric, burlap, linen, whatever it is. It's just fun ways to do this. And, and sometimes, I, I, again, we always joke about, you know, making 200 Christmas cards around here, which I've never done. But thinking about this, it's very easy to compartmentalize for the season, right? You can do your card bases, you can do all your uh, trim pieces, and it doesn't have to be the entire thing. It can just be the reveal strip. You can cut your tags, you can do your stamping, do your inking, and then you can sit down and assemble. And I think that's really uh, wonderful to see, all right? This one, I have to say, uh, Tifa, it, it made me smile. Why? Well, be, first of all, I love it. Second, I love that it's square. And third, I love that you also dipped in to <laughs> the stash uh, from last year. I love that. I, I really, it's like, yep, okay, I, I got that. I'm going to take that little cloud right there. So it, it, when I saw this, it just made me smile. So Tifa created this envelope. I love those handmade envelopes, doing the stamps, doing this, the stencil, and then again, creating the scene right? Doing your stamping, doing your coloring. And I love those layered clouds over the scene, right? So good uh, just to add color. This again could be something that maybe you don't have time to make cards, or maybe you have a different type of card, or maybe you're doing photo cards. I know many, many families, uh, many people just do those printed photo cards, right? You can then just create the envelopes handmade. So you can still put that in, do your Christmas letter, do all that. But the envelope that you did 
is hand done. You could still leave a space for the address. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can add a handmade touch to anything that you do. Just remember that, right? It's always a way uh, that you can, you can definitely do that. And just, just the colors, the ideas, but yeah, those clouds just make me smile. Love, I love the stencil. I do, it seems odd, but I really love it. And yeah, a wonderful Christmas time. It's the same, it's the same verse I did. I like that. It just, it is a wonderful Christmas time. Christmas time. The whole season makes it wonderful. Amazing, amazing. All right. Just, it's, yeah, seeing these. Just, ugh, all, all the feels, right? All the feels for the holidays. I agree. Uh, so this card, Stacy created this one. Speaking of all the feels, look at this, like, loose watercolor. This is what, this is what I want to do uh, next time. It's just a little bit more loose. I stayed in the lines. I, I got a little in my head. So I love the fact of just doing loose watercolor on that card panel, that little scene, the splatter, right? Using the snow. I love the, the little addition of some Sizzix dyes. I love this little tinsel thread, that little metallic thread. Just see, doesn't it just give it a little festive vibe right there? Stamping on vellum. Stacy does this a lot and I think it's a brilliant idea. You've seen it in many, many of her cards. And there again, when you have that, you just, it works because stamping and embossing on a strip of vellum and having it over the card, meaning uh, she sews the edges, right? Look at how good she sews. She actually sewed on the thing. Oh my word. Goals right there. Goals. But when, when she's sewing the vellum, the vellum isn't laying flat on the card. That's what I was, because you might be rolling your eyes going, thanks, Captain Obvious, stamping on vellum. Yeah. But the idea here, the idea is, is having that little bit of, of a space. You see that, that little gap, because that's what gives it to, because I think sometimes, see if it's flat, it still works, but it also picks up a lot of the background. And that little lift right there, just because you're sewing it, you can kind of push that in. And if you weren't sewing, add your adhesive or your brads or your tiny attacher, just give it that little gap because, again, I think it reads really clear and it also creates just a different bit of perspective on there. Layering with some patterned paper. Look at that little mica. Look at that little, and it's a deckle trimmer. See, I'm noticing all the details. Look at that. Bring on the tonic decal trimmer. Tis the season to decal people. Look at that. I love that. I just noticed that. It, it gave, because I thought it was torn. And then I'm like, but she was really good at tearing a square. And then I'm like, nope, decal with a little bit of mica. Absolutely beautiful. I agree, Beth, Susie. Yeah, I agree, Zoe. It's a beautiful card. It is. It's really neat to see uh, all of these all these different ones. And yes, there are, there are cards that aren't in the live that you guys have got to check out. You will be blown away. We still have a few more. So Anita created this. I always love just Anita is, is not afraid of a bold contrast color, whether it's bright or deep. I love this night sky. Like look at, look at that beautiful mica night sky, the embossing on here, right? Stamped and embossed in black. I think that's nice another thing if you do embossing on an image it's really great when you're coloring because it helps kind of things it creates a little bit of a well where your color stays inside the lines seeing that layered this is beautiful because this is all done on black cardstock right so what makes this kind of look like a, a velvet elvis painting is just that black cardstock using the pencils right because that's going to really pop on here using the mica stain that's going to give it that vivid look but it's all done on black cardstock. And sometimes we would think like for Christmas, like, Ooh, I'm, I'm staying away from that. Mm. Well, if you have the, the pencils, the pencils really allow you to, to go in and, and play around and build color on, on dark surfaces. But I love that. I love that with the mica. See, it's got so much texture and shine. You got that shine from the embossing, that little bit of texture and glitter from that stencil. And then you've got that sheen of the mica stain and then just that opacity of the pencils. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I can go on and on and on. That's yes, for sure. Can. I can. I can. Would you start? I, because I am so inspired. I'm always inspired by just how, how makers make, right? So Kath created this one. I love this card. I love the little tag done in red, right? The little, little string. I know Paula would love that little red string too. Um, it's just that the little detail, that pop of color that just brings your eye up to that little sentiment. But here's what I found really unique about Kath's card because when I was putting it, when I was sorting it last night, I was like, oh, she, okay, she didn't make a card. She just made a panel. That's good. And then when I set it in there, I saw this and I'm like, are you kidding me? Shut the front door. Look at that. 
And I know, again, you're like rolling your eyes, like, really? You've never seen it? I've seen it, but you don't pick it up right away. And sometimes you see just that little idea that's not related to a die cut, that doesn't require any fancy gadget other than just cutting it out. But I love the continuity of not just the color, not just the scene, but, but when it was cascading, how the whole entire scene continued inside the card, right? You've got that rolling masked hill of snow, that mica stain in there. That to me is what I thought like, okay, you didn't just open it and it was just white. No, you really kept with the whole theme of the snowflakes, the texture in there, and just adding that little torn swoop and then on the nice list and using two sentiments. That's really what I found magical, right? A great idea to take that and say, okay, you know, I would even do that. Like to me, I saw this and I was like, okay, this is a great idea because it could also be like a gift card pocket, right? I love the idea that if I was going to do this on a tag, I could ink the tag. I could then stamp and cut and color these separate fussy cut the top. Cause I can do that. I can just go around and you know what, if, if he loses a little pom pom, I can add one, but then choose the part that I want, stick this part on a tag. And then that's the pocket for a gift card, right? I think that that idea you can then translate into so many other ways of, of incorporating it. And you have to see it, I think, to maybe trigger that. Like I said, it's probably something you've seen a bazillion times, but then when you see it a little different, it's like, okay, that's really good, right? Amazing, amazing, amazing inspiration. So we're gonna get into like a little, a little mixed media, if you will, because it wasn't just all about cards, but I'm going to just go back because I want to throw it back to Heidi because, hey, we've got someone in the studio and, oh my gosh, there's confetti everywhere, but that's, that's it. That's a mess. It's, well, at least I we, have to we have it up. We have to kind of do a, a craft math to see how much of that stuff just kind of flew. But, again, this is not an interview because I think she's sitting here going, what, well, what, what is he going to ask me? What is he going to ask me? I love that there's mixed media ones coming up next. Yeah. It's fun to see the variety of people not just card making, but also doing other projects, tags with it. Absolutely. I think it's, it's just incredible to see the inspiration because I, I don't know if, if people truly realize like when you, when we do a live, when we do makes, we don't have like this big rah, rah meeting with all, I mean, I do with, with my brand makers, but I can something like this. It's literally like, here's a set that they've not seen. So it's not like, let me see if I like that set before I agree to it. It's kind of a little bit of iron chef you're going to get it and you have to use the ingredient in the box for better oh, or worse. I didn't think right? about it that way. So they agree like, which that's what I'm so grateful for that a lot of makers that don't normally make in this aesthetic, they're like, bring it on. I'm going to do it. And yet they still do themselves. And that to me is, is the power of creativity. And so I'm really grateful that they just take it. They made with it. They did their own thing. They sent it in again. It's not about like, oh my gosh, what, what is somebody else going to do? And how is mine going to look with someone? It's not that. It's like, this is my creative contribution to the industry. And we should all be mindful of that. We all have something to contribute to this industry. All of us. Like what you bring Amen. to this industry, yeah. you, like that is your mission, if anything. I mean, we go back many, many years. And I think that that is the thing. There's a few wrinkles added that, since we've met. I know. At least I know. Me. It's like, if I have any kind of expression, you'll really notice it. But if I'm like, I'm not. Me too. Yeah, well, I'll it's a good opportunity. I, I think you're bringing up a good point, Tim. It's a great opportunity to thank the makers because they put themselves out there, mm -hmm. not only by getting something that's unknown, because they didn't see these nope. stamps and stencils before <laughs> they said, yeah, sure, sign us up. We'll try yeah. to make something. And uh, these makers have made something. They've sent it to you. Some of them, especially the international ones, we've posted images of, but the timeline of shipping internationally right now is always is yeah. kind of tricky. So thank you to all of the makers who put themselves out there. Because make to me, it was pressure. I made something, which is coming up soon. But it, it, for me, it was like I, I made. I was making decisions knowing that other people were going to see. And that's a different, like, I usually make for the whole just pure enjoyment of making. Mm -hmm. Just putting in an art journal, just creating, just making backgrounds. Knowing that probably nobody's ever going to see this, except maybe the one person I give the card to. Am I talking too much? No. What I was going to say is that, oh. but that thought process should always be how you feel to making. And I know it's hard to get out of that because you just said like, I'm making where people see it versus making for fun. And to me, those should be the same. Oh, but it, it was fun. See, it that's the thing. She ended so up doing fun. it and yeah, loving it. it and she's like, fun. I made like, even knowing people were going to see it. As soon as she it, came yeah. in, she's like, I made, I love it. And she was yeah. happy about it. And that's the other thing I think to remember as makers, like don't apologize for your creativity. And sometimes people do that. Like I made this, I know it's not good. If you don't like it, it's like, 
Never apologize for your art. Never. This is you saying, I made for the thrill of making and I loved it. That's it. If not, thank you that's for it. encouraging us, Tim. But you do that. Like you do that with your weekly challenges, your all of those things, like you continue to put back into this industry because I think as a maker yourself, you know the power of the the imagination that's really what it is it there is a business of course there is a business behind that there's i've said that it's a business behind my brand as well but if you are a maker at heart a lot of times you will see very authentically that the creativity side comes first it comes before the business and you do that all the time i mean this is one of those things like you invested a lot of time in your company to kind of change your day-to-day -day dynamic to put on stamp timber in addition to running your company, you weren't like, hey, we're just going to stop selling stuff for a while. We're going to focus on stamps. You're like, no, we're going to keep running our business the way we do, but we're going to also add this. So even to your team uh, at Simon, because everybody is really working that much harder to not only do the everyday, but also to support this this wonderful thing of Stamp Timber, so. And to keep posting. You're amazing. Yeah, thank You're you. Amazing. All right. And thank, well, thanks to the people for watching because we do it for you. Yeah. So we wouldn't be doing fun. any of this without you. We have a party. They have snacks, they have drinks. I'm, I'm sure some people even have cocktails, which very jealous, but that's gonna happen Soon, here maybe. after the live, it yeah. will. So let's get back show to the, the makes. So the, show okay. the mixed media one. Here we go. All right. <laughs> so seeing how these can also like change, change the way people kind of create and make, right? Beth created this, and this just made me so, so happy. A vignette tray, right? Ideology vignette tray, a little ribbon to hang. Uh, and, and you'll know why it makes me happy. See, tiny lights, tiny lights for the win. Look at those little tiny lights. Okay, so this, and, and I had to do a double take when I was putting this uh, out. So I was like, okay, so let me see. Like, okay, this, okay, the box, okay. And what I couldn't wrap my head around that Beth did is I'm like, where did this, where did this come from? Like, where, where's the rest of the house? Because this wasn't in like a previous, she went in and just drew that. Like, so if you have that skill set of drawing or sketching or seeing something different, play into that. And I love just seeing an entire scene built on, on that vertical tray, stamped, cut out. You see the little sparkly on the tree. You see that layer, there's that moon in the background and then adding a little bit of woodland trees with some tiny lights, right? So you got those little lights that turn on and off, but then adding this ribbon, there you go. That's someone that could hang that right on their wall, in their office, whatever, the power of a stamp. So when we talked about mixed media, it can be interpreted many, many different ways, but seeing how Beth created this and taking something and going, you know what? I, yeah, I can make a card and I like to do that, but I'm gonna put in the time to, to create this and build a scene because I'm gonna create a decor piece. That's what I was saying is never apologize for the creative idea. Sometimes things take way long and sometimes you can do cards and you can do tags. You can take an idea and really explore it to, to any, any level. Beautiful, right? So cool. Then when I saw this panel, Nina created this. So this is, I, I love these, I do. This is a frame panel from Ideology. Sadly, these are, these are going away. I love them because it's a, it's a detachable wooden frame, but you could do this with any kind of frame or panel, but look at that beautiful winter scene stamped right in the center. And this is so, I'll, I'll set it down so you can kind of get the overall look. This was another thing that was super inspiring. When you look at this stamp, right? Again, it, it definitely has that like comfort corner, I call it, right? A lot of times if I do an image, I'll, I'll provide the maker a comfort corner because then we know, okay, it's very, it's comfortable. I know where it's gonna go. It's gonna go in this corner of the card, it, it's awesome. but to create that and just say, you know what, I'm going to go like right in the middle. I'm going to go in the middle of this whole deal. And then I'm just going to fade around that scene, right? I'm going to continue that out. That to me is very inspiring to see how an image can be interpreted and used. And so Nina created this. I love that beautiful, colorful scene. I mean, this looks like a vintage postcard, that coloring style, right? There's a little bit of pen work added on top of that. You see all those little black lines? those little scribbly dribblies right there. So she did all that, right? Little sketch lines. Then we've got the embossed snowflakes cut around there. More mica. I love how so many people use mica flakes because I do love that Ranger still kept mica flakes around. I love them, especially for the season. And then this, so charming because you've got the little holly leaves, this hinge clip, and then this little envelope, right? That little, little chapter three envelope with like a little 
a little Santa Claus note. something in Yes, there. yes. I did not realize that. Isn't that so cute? So like a, just yeah. a little, I know, right? A little letter to Santa, or maybe you want to tuck in a little uh, holiday wish to someone, and then you've got this little envelope. Let me put this back in. It's got the paste. So cute, and then clipped on. So I thought that was also really clever that you could incorporate a message into a decor make, and then the whole thing is part of the decor. Like you said, you didn't even know that there was a message inside because giving this to someone, putting in your time as making, and that's another thing. Sometimes as makers, we assume everyone can make. I believe everyone can make, but not everyone wants to tap into that make. And so making something handmade for people as a gift is really, I, th I think, incredibly mindful because you can adapt that style to the person that you're giving it to. And I think adding those little details, like putting that, that little note, how charming, right? Hinge clip for the win. That is just so cool. Frames are going to go and you could see that's why you want that stencil because you can just ding, 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 ding. But the stencil comes with the stamp, not a separate thing. It's all one, but that's why we did it. Because Heidi and I were talking, we we're like, we need a, we need some type of stencil. It's like, okay, let's, let's add some texture. Let's do that. And then, well, you know, I like, I like something with a, a lot of movement and take a look at this little shaker box that Sherry did, right? So this is a vignette box, the new square vignettes, right? She just covered the back. She's got acetate on the front. I love how she used the stencil over the whole front part of that piece of acetate. But inside here, can you guys see it before I shake it up? There's mica flakes again. And it's this whole little shakety shaker box, right? So let me just get it to where it's going to be hard with the light. There we go. I'll show you. There is a beautiful dimensional winter scene. I mean, the tree is cut and layered. Then the Santa is cut and layered. Then there's trees in the background of that layer. So this is stamped multiple, multiple times to create a scene. These trees stamped and layered over here, right? And then if you look in the background, there's the snowflakes. So, so beautiful. And then of course we have uh, those wonderful stamps. I just love it. It's so amazing. Isn't that great? Shakety shake, right? You can see all those little micas, just amazing. So cool. I love it. We're having a good time. Isn't that beautiful? So Sherry just, yeah, great idea to take a, stamp set and, and put it in a box, put it in a frame. That's what we were saying about mixed media, that you can really take it to, to any level. But then, then you could just be like, you know what? I'm going full on mixed media. I'm going to be like, I'm going to do the season uh, my way, right? So Andrea created this one. Take a look at this folder, right? So this is one of the, the ideology folders, but look at how mixed media this is. Now it does include some stamps because you might look and be like, wait a minute, I thought it was about this. It is right? These stamps, she used the snowflakes in the background. She used your on the nice list, which is hilarious because that was Heidi's must have stamp that went in the set. Then she just used the ideology paper dolls, added a Santa hat that she uh, sketched out and cut and then put in this arrow. That is hilarious. That is so great, right? That's so fun to just go in and add color, add your sketch lines and really just embrace the mixed media, because if your style is truly this, if your style is collage elements and all that, and you're like, I'm not much of a stamper, I don't really, really want to go in and do the fussy cut and the coloring, this is where stamped images just have power in themselves as being an image, an image that you can incorporate into your artistic style. It doesn't have to be the entire buffet. It can just be choosing the things that you want from the buffet. And I think that just adding that you're on the nice list and this arrow, and just that grin, it completely changes. I mean, we've had this paper doll uh, in the everyday line. It totally changes how that is. And yeah, that Santa cap is like, that's awesome. It's so good, really fun. And mixed media can just be, yeah, anything. Take a look at this. This is Heidi's make, Heidi's awesome mixed media make. And I, when I saw this, like, I, look, I got goosies, guys. I actually got chills when I saw this because I'm like, this is so cool. And Heidi was worried. She's like, I don't know, like the pencils. Yeah, I'm like, I love that. I'm like, when you have something, you do you, right? I've seen uh, this done with like crayons where it's stuck on there and then you kind of melt them and let them drip. And I love that she did it with pencils. I love that she has the pencils. And yes, these pencils are part of her art project. She's like, you know what? They're my pencils. I can do what I want. And, <laughs> and, and, and the fact that you, you have a company where you know where you can get more, but I love this. I mean, seriously, how beautiful is, is that seeing all of those colors at, and I mean, Heidi, you can talk through how you did it, but I was like, how did you do it? Did you really put this down? And 
Yeah. What are those silver? I love the These are droplets. Things. Are they yes. called so they're the they're metallic. They come these with are metallic droplets. Yeah. So these are the ideology metallic droplets. So they're little half domes. They come so gold and silver. Easy to use, and I just want to put them on everything. Yeah. I wanted to or outline the entire canvas with those, but I just didn't. Have, can you believe I didn't have enough? <laughs> well, I can believe that because you're like, I think one pack is going to be enough, and then you open it and you're like, yeah, no. Not to outline a whole twelve by yeah. twelve canvas or eight by eight. Or eight. So we did metallic droplets, and then we also did like the pearlescent ones this year in ideology, which you have. But I love that because these remind me again. I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it back to food. These remind me of those little metallic sprinkles. Whenever I saw those on a cupcake, mm -hmm. it was like eating BBs. I think you have some. Well, you know, I'm just that guy. In the sprinkle cabinet. But I love, I love how this color, where you just put the pencils and you just totally soak this and just let the color just dance down the canvas. Like, how stunning is that? And it was a lot of fun to do. It's it's just beautiful. I thought you were gonna I, sing when you were like, there are my pants. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> they're my pencils and i'll make if i want to yeah it's it's so good right but this again is like following your following your muse following what you wanted to create with it and you don't have to justify your muse to anyone else you do you, you, you. and i love that and that is what i love about this 2022 exclusive stamp timber collaboration with stampers anonymous and simon says stamp and i Hope you guys are inspired by all of these makes. There's so many incredible ways that you can utilize the stamps, sentiments, snowflakes, stencils to really just be inspired for the holiday season. But when it's gone, it is gone for good. We do not bring back previous year sets. People are like, you need to do like a little comeback series. And it's, it, just, it just doesn't work that way. It's, that's something magical about Stamp Timber. That's what I think is like that you have it. It's a celebration. It's just... Is amazing. See, they love your make. Are you are you seeing it? Are you feeling the love here? <laughs> She's it was like, really fun to do. It's, I, it's it's good. It feels good to make something and then be happy with how it turns out, and then be able to give it and and have yeah. it be an expression of yourself. So it is. Yeah, and it is funny. I love Tim's watercolor pencils. I'm I'm a huge fan. So I, it was. I, I knew I needed to do something with that and something with the snowflakes from the set, knowing that if you have that stamp set, you can do more than a Santa with it because the Santa is the primary focus. And I saw a lot of the makers being really obsessed with the Santa. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, I've got to do something a little different than mm -hmm. everybody else. So yeah. I did get a sneak peek of what a lot of the makers were doing. So yeah. that really helped too. So Tim, thank the you. The power thank of the stamp. you for doing this. It's good because fun. you put yourself out there. You, you always encourage us. You keep us positive. Thanks. I love it. I love being part of this industry because this really is like, it's a great outlet on, on many levels. It really is. And I think that, you know, to be able to be part of the industry and remind people that we all are part of this industry, we all have something to contribute. And I think sometimes you hear those words, but you don't really like feel those words. And I want you to feel them. And I think that what you do, what you bring to the table with, you know, focusing on something and really putting this in, it, it does encourage all of us to come together to celebrate. It doesn't matter what brand you are, where people are like, oh, it's your brand, and what about this brand? Like, there's, there's room for everyone at the table, right? I just say, there's room for everyone at the table, as long as you're not sitting on someone's lap, right? Because that's just what you shouldn't do. <laughs> because if you're sitting on their lap, you can't, they can't eat, right? You're just, you're like, oh, I'm here. There's room for everybody. So, about buffets, so talking about I'm talking about food, but it's like really just kind of pull up a chair and just know that you have a place here and, and everybody uh, can contribute an idea. Big, small, colorful, grungy, vintage, simple. We all have something to contribute because it's going to trigger an idea that then you guys can take to wherever you see it going. And I, that's what I really love about celebrating. And I'm so grateful that, you know, whenever we do these lives, like, it is a party. We like to have fun, right? Of course, we don't know that there's going to be a confetti cannon going off. Like, <laughs> Thank you, Mario. In <laughs> seconds. Brought the fun. But that's good. I, yeah. I remained upright. I didn't you just did. collapse, which was good because yeah, that, that could happen. We could have just fallen over like in shock, but it was really good fun. And you guys being here, it just is, is a part of that. And I th see so many people that contributed makes that joined us for for this live, so thanks. And thank you for making the trip, really. Oh, you flying out last pleasure. night, you're here today, it should go some tomorrow, it's like, it was so awesome. coming out here because yeah, this little town, it's not easy to get to. No. You can't just fly into it. You gotta, you gotta be on the road for a while, but. And it does rain in Arizona. Out, yeah, I didn't know it rained, it rained in Arizona. Day, it, rained it does rain, we're, we're getting fall weather, which is really nice. Fall weather means uh, good snacks. It means good candy corn. I, I agree. you're hungry. 
Well, be before we sign off, too, I do want to let everybody know I've been getting texts from our team at, at Simon while we've been live. I've got my phone in my pocket getting texts. We do still have inventory, but I just want to remind everybody that it is limited edition. So once it sells out, it's gone. It's not quite sold out, but it, you guys are really loving the set. So that's, that's, they're definitely loving it too. That's, awesome. that's so good. I don't want anybody to be that's disappointed good. if you're on the fence that they, I do anticipate. Can I put gone. you on the spot? Oh, do well, it, do it. I have to ask do you it. anyway. Yeah, do I, it, do it, do it. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a bad thing because I know it. Around. No, really, this is like... Are you going to come around. out with yellow and distress? No, 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 no. No, this is really a business question because I don't oh, okay. understand, but I don't want people to okay. be like, oh, this is kind of a setup because, okay. I, because I'm an Etsy shopper, so I know. So just hypothetically, if I'm on your site and I put something in my cart, is it mine? Okay, it's like Etsy well, it's then. Like Etsy. I, I didn't want to say that if it wasn't that way, but if you're not familiar with how that... That means like if it's in your cart, it's not yours until you check out. And I'm only saying that as a... As, not that I don't shop at Simon Says as well, but as an Etsy person, you've gotten like, burned a couple times. I learned that the hard way so many times, and I'm sure you have as well, yeah. where you think it's yours, especially like because we like to buy, like, we'll talk about chicken lips, but it's like you think it's yours and you are like fast. Not that you have to be this fast for stamp timber, but just because it's in your cart and you're like, oh, I'm going to add some stuff later today, and then you go back, and then there's like an error, doesn't let you check out. That's the thing. So, again, this is not like an infomercial pressuring you. But just so you're aware, because sometimes people aren't aware of that. And they think, because I clicked it and I see it there, it's mine. So I'll add some stuff later today and then I'll check out. And then if they don't have it, then they're mad at you because it was in my cart and it's gone. It's like, well, it's not the grocery store. It's not like someone's going to take stuff out of your cart. But I guess in this sense, it happens. Right. So. Right. And I, okay. don't, I don't want people to be disappointed. So I'm glad no. that you, you yeah. mentioned that. When you know, oh, look, do you, yeah. Mario, do you see how quick Mario was with those emojis? I just saw it. He's like, I got to go back. He's texting like, as we're yeah, he's like, if it's in your shopping cart, good. And then he kind of did like this like explosion bomb thing going. That's just how Mario was. Okay. You, did you guys see? Did you see that for a second we were all together having a good time? And then all of a sudden people left. This is what I do. See, I knew he was going to get, I knew he was going to get someone in. He's got a, you have a partner in crime here. I do. You do. Those are, see, those are the cute hats. These are the hats that Zoe got us. Aren't they sweet? Oh. Thank They're you, so Zoe. sweet. I love that. So yeah, very festive. she gets to sport mine for this because I'm, I can't mess up this coffee. Right. Look. Oh my gosh. Okay. He's got tiny lights. <gasps> do you see? What? Why did you do that? <laughs> you are. Did you have those on the whole day? I'm very busy behind <laughs> oh the scenes. Oh my gosh. I can't make, but do I can do my own kind shirt? of you, So You're not. Under your shirt. So you see what I do with in real time. <laughs> That so you keep it fun. He is right here, right under your nose, and you think everything is good, right? Everything is normal, and then it just yeah. happens. It it happens, and you and you think I'm gonna catch it. I'm gonna totally be aware. No, you're not. And you're not you're because not. see, look at that smile. Because yeah. that's what he does behind the scenes. Where oh, like man. a lot of times I'm like, they show up pretty good. It was probably when I was when I was showing the makes, and I'm like, hey guys, what do you think? And then but silence. I don't know they what, weren't even in the room. It did start as like, it was supposed to be a heart, but I don't know what happened. Oh. <laughs> We'll have to work on your heart I skills. I don't know if the tape didn't hold or if I was... Yeah. Old, you can just say it's All the it's a constellation. Oh, it's kind That's of a tree. Is. Look, it's kind of a Christmas tree on the bottom. <laughs> it's just a... It's really good in the dark. It's a... It so, shows it's up a, so good. It's a... Well, you can shut the... I don't, well, it's still daytime here. It's a... It's Mario <laughs> Merriman. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Oh, we see we got the fire going on. Oh, he's going to shut off all the lights. Oh, oh there you yeah, go. that's awesome. Mar there you go. See, he is just that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna that's say that's my make. I'm gonna say it looks like a rocking horse. So let we can just with a oh, really big. It really was supposed to be a rocking horse. Oh, yeah. Thank there you. There you go. We all make it our own good. special way. <laughs> that's just how it is. So yeah, it's we do have good fun around here. You, you never know what what we're gonna what we're gonna get from this. But that's I think the the best part of of what we do is we you have to have a good time and we have a good time in lives we have a good time in a making today. and i really can't <laughs> wait to see uh oh there you go so you said th thought it was a reindeer we're gonna oh, go with that reindeer it was anything yeah. you think it was it was <laughs> it was that that's exactly that's right it was uh so with that really thank you guys for for joining us for thank this for stamp timber uh collab exclusive it's just it's such a thrill to be part of simon says stamp uh, really to, to do these fun. events because I really, I admire what you give to this creative industry. I believe you get what you give in life, in relationships, in friendships, in everything, and certainly in this industry. And you're proof of that. You really, right. 
You know, or a giver. I, I know you're, you are, she is a giver. She's a giver see, giver. she doesn't like that. Do you see like, oh, she's getting all weird already. <laughs> okay. Note to self, the team of Simon. If you, if you just want her to be quiet, just start giving her compliments. <laughs> if, if she's talking in some sort of meeting or whatever, you just go, you know what? Your outfit is amazing. And I think how your hair looks today, it's just, be- this, is what, this is what you'll get. They are probably all wondering how to get me to be quiet. Now, you know, now, you know, the secret yeah. is just pay her a compliment because I, I do. I think Thank that. You. The, just the world needs to, to be that, right? I would say, if you don't have anything nice to say, find something nice to say, exactly. and you can, and you can find a way that you can be relevant and, and give a positive spin onto, you know, a very congested industry, you might think, right? Everyone thinks like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on, and sometimes people see it as competition, and we've never seen the, the industry the as competition. Right. We just yeah. see it as really a community of, of inspiring and doing Uh, what we love to do and sharing it with all of you. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Happy Happy Stamptember. There's still days. There's still days of Stamptember. This is not the end of Stamptember. You still have what? Another week of Stamptember. Yep. Correct? So there's still another week. There's another collab tomorrow. Grand finale coming up. It's good fun. I got a week of cleaning confetti. Well, that's going to be on him. I think that, yeah, Heidi and I are probably just going to go. Yeah, uh, you guys go and chill. Have have a a glass of wine and just really enjoy. So thank you guys. Thanks Thanks so much. Thanks to all the makers and have a wonderful Stamp Timber. See you guys. Bye everyone.